Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, what I'm going to talk about is how to customize the select input box in the forms to have a different looking feel than the defined, uh, the defined one or the default one. Well, I was stumbling upon some of the job sort of uh, descriptions over here and I saw this Uber one uh, that has these customized select boxes, right? So when it pops up, it's a default one, which is pretty good but the actual look and feel of the select box is different. So today we're gonna do it. We're gonna make it uh, so that it looks different. So the way to do it, let me start by going to the Kotus online editor. Let's create just a select box. So a normal select box in Chrome and pretty much everywhere else in other browsers looks something like this. So I'm just gonna add an option, maybe four of it. And then I'm just going to say option one, copying this, do here, come here, do option two, option three, and option four, right? So this is how it looks like, at least in Chrome, but in general, it looks pretty much the same. And in my eyes, I mean, I like the default look and feel of things, but we can make it much nicer. That's how Uber did it in their sort of job page listing over here. So let's get started. The way I'm going to do it is that I'm just going to define a, normally I define a parent container. Uh, I go to CSS, define the container to have like some sort of a width, uh, maybe 60%, and I'm just going to give it a margin of 30 pixels. Now, uh, for this case, instead of copying all this here, we need to have a parent container. I'm just going to call it a div with class select container, right? And going back here, copying the select and put it inside my select container. So now, as you can see, we have pretty much a container. It could be any div, you know, in your page. And then you, instead of putting the select like this, you need to actually put this one. So we have a div and then that div has the select. Now, what I'm going to do is that I know my parent container is this, and then the select, I just want to make the width to be 100 pixel. So as you can see now, the width of this is 100 pixel. Second thing I want to do is changing the border so that we're not going to get any border. So now we don't have any border. One thing to note is that if you define padding for the select, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to say, 40 pixel padding, you can see that it's not going to work. The way though, now that we have the select container, is just to define the select container class in the CSS, and then I can easily define a padding, let's say 10 pixel. Now you can see that I have 10 pixel. I'm just going to go ahead and change the background to be transparent. So now we don't have any background. Now, I'm just going to give it a border to the select container, border, maybe one pixel solid, and then AAA. You can see that I have a very nice border, changing the select font size to be a little bit bigger. Now, it's nicer. So you can see we already changed the look and feel of the select. Now, what we what is left is this uh, guy over here. But also you can see in Chrome, you, you get this outline on the inputs or the form elements. I'm just going to say outline none for now, so that when I click, there is no, there's no blue outline over here. Now, how are we going to deal with this guy? I know for a fact that there is a CSS property called appearance, right? And when I set it to none, and this, this thing is supposed to change. But one of the important things is that some of the CSS properties actually or have different implementations, in this case, this one, in different browsers, right? So for example, in Chrome, which uses WebKit for rendering the CSS, uh, it needs to have like a prefix, right? WebKit, appearance, none. And now you can see that this guy goes away. So for this same reason, and this is very important, there are some CSS you know, properties that need to be vendor prefixed. And, you know, sometimes when you do code, you, you're you not familiar with all of it, right? So for that reason, uh, we developed a tool in Kotus.com, and I'm going to show it now. If you go to Tools and this CSS Auto Prefixer, now if I copy the same code that I have, 
copy the actual class that contains that and I'm going to just going to remove this WebKit for now. I'm just going to copy this, going to the tool and paste it over here. And I just say auto prefix, right? Now, what it does is that it, for the properties that actually need to be auto prefixed, you can see that it actually adds the vendor, the prefix that uh, is needed. So now you can see that it not only added WebKit, but also added MOS, meaning that in Firefox, uh, you have to actually you know use this otherwise you're not going to see the effect that you need so now i'm just going to copy this going back to the code and i'm just going to replace this select with the new one now you can see that it actually works already but we also know that it will work in other browsers as well so that's a good thing so now what i need to do the last step as you can see in uber job listing they have this arrow uh, I always go to material icons usually uh, for their uh, I font icon sets and let's search here for arrow now you can see that there are different arrows here uh, for example this one is the one that uh, uber has used but uh, not as specifically of course from this uh, you know website but they use similar uh, I'm gonna use this one I like this one a little bit more the way you can use it, obviously, you can copy this code in your, um, basically, in your HTML. But for this purpose, I'm just going to use pseudo elements. The way to include uh, material design fonts is going to these instructions. I'm just going to search for link. And I'm just going to include this CSS file, which they provide in my code. So in my CSS, I'm just going to say import URL. And then I will paste this. Now this already is included in my project. Now to or in order to use these pseudo elements, I know that my my select is within its container, and then I do after. I'm going to set the content just to something that I can see arrow. So this is going to be the we're going to replace this later. I'm just going to set the position to be absolute. And then the right to be maybe 10 pixel. Now you can see that even though I defined the right 10 pixel, instead of you know aligning from here in my container, it actually went up all the way because we defined this position to be absolute. And its parent, which is select container, doesn't have the relative position defined. So I'm just going to say position relative. Now you can see that the arrow ends up within the container. But now I have to set the uh, set it to be vertically centered. So I'm just going to say top 50%, and then transform translate y minus 50%. Now you can see that my arrow is kind of centered. It's the way it's the place I want it to be. Going back to icon material design, I'm just going to copy this text and I'm going to replace that in my project instead of arrow i'm going to use this and the last thing we need to do is define the font family to be material icons right so now you can see that i have the arrow i'm just going to set the font size to something bigger uh, looks nice maybe the color to be 333 instead so now or maybe 666 it's too dark so yeah there we go uh, we have a new feel and look uh, the problem now here is that when clicking here, you see the option, but if you start clicking this, you're not going to, I'm just actually clicking on this arrow, it's not going to open. And the way to fix it, in CSS, we have a property called pointer events, and I'm just going to set it to none, right? Now, if I click on this, you can see that I actually see my option. So basically, this CSS property means that do not do anything. Uh, when when you use the pointer so there is no pointer event that will affect it so this is going to be none and there will be nothing we can obviously go ahead and uh, style this a little bit more i always do border radius three pixel it looks nicer on the corners uh, you can even go ahead and make it more if you want for example like this uh, three is okay for me uh, the other thing you need to you know make sure you understand is that if i change the body background body uh the body background to be something like i don't know like maybe e e e uh, or maybe a little bit darker let's see c c c 
now it's darker you can see that since we defined the select background to be transparent it will always be whatever color the background of this select container has and in this case it's the full page over here so now how are we going to fix it the only thing you need to do is to set the background color to be something else like FFF and there you go you have your select box already over here and it looks kind of better than the default one I'm just gonna copy the default one so that you have some sort of an understanding of how it looks so this is the default one and now this is our new fill and look for the select box so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already click on the bell icon so that you can be notified when the new tutorial uh, is coming up uh, very excited uh, next tutorial is going to be a super amazing tutorial uh, it's going to be scrollable pages uh, which is uh, super awesome it's going to be more extensive so stay tuned for that and I wish you a very good day and night as always see you next time and goodbye